Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another video. It's been a while since we've uploaded here on the channel, but we are entering a stretch that is going to see some pretty active severe weather move north across the northern and central plains into the Midwest and Great Lakes regions. Uh, it's that time of year. We're going into mid-June. Uh, as the jet stream usually does, it is starting to migrate north, as is our moisture, and that is expected to create several days of severe thunderstorm potential across the northern half of the U.S., including places like the Northern Plains into the Midwest and Great Lakes. As you can see here, a lot of SPC outlines here for the next few days. Uh, we're going to focus on today in this video. Today is a very interesting setup across parts of Minnesota uh, into Wisconsin, uh, but we do have several days uh, leading, uh, several days following today uh, that have severe weather outlines for parts of these same regions. So for today, here's what we have going on. We have an enhanced risk level three out of five in the orange shaded region here across northeast Minnesota into parts of northwest Wisconsin, places like Duluth, Minnesota, right in that uh, enhanced risk area up there. Large slight risk surrounds it uh, down from the North Dakota, Minnesota border southward into western or eastern South Dakota northern Iowa over into much of the western half of Wisconsin with a marginal risk surrounding that. All hazards are on the table for today. We have a tornado risk at a 5% right now across that enhanced risk region with a 2% extending down into northern Iowa. Uh, we also have a large hail and damaging wind threat. Large hail is going to be the main threat with supercells today extending up from the Canadian border uh, in northern Minnesota uh, down into northwest Iowa. 15% hashed area and a 30% hashed area up there in northeast Minnesota, northwest Wisconsin surrounding that Duluth region for supercells with a significant large hail threat. Damaging wind also going to be a threat, particularly up in that region as well, 30% unhatched for some significant damaging winds up there. So very active day today on tap for this, for this region. Uh, and then we go into the next couple of days, slight risk outline from northeast Kansas, north uh, eastward into southern Michigan. Tornado threat is low tomorrow, but there is a 2% tornado risk uh, extending within that slight risk region. Uh, damaging wind and large hail could be, a, could be all threats with storms tomorrow. Then we go into Friday. Friday is looking quite interesting. On our day three outlook, we have a slight risk there centered on uh, Nebraska into northern Kansas. Uh, very interesting look to Friday. We'll touch on that toward the end of the video. Slight risk up there in the northeast, but we're going to uh, forgo discussing that for now and focus on our plain severe risks. Uh, but we do have that 15% severe risk in both of those areas. Then we have now a day uh, six outline. Day six is going to be uh, for Monday, June 17th. So early next week, uh, we have an outline now for some of the same regions, eastern Dakotas into Minnesota, 15% risk outline there for the potential for severe thunderstorms coming up early next week. And we could see uh, severe, weather, severe weather chances in between that day three outlook and this day six outlook, uh, but we just don't have enough confidence to outline uh, any areas yet. But we do have multiple days of severe potential that uh, on which confidence is increasing uh, starting with today, especially across parts of Minnesota into uh, Wisconsin. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Let's show you what's going on right now. And what's going on right now is we have some storms that are ongoing. And this has been the major kind of fly in the ointment with this particular setup. We were not sure how the morning storms were going to react and progress through the morning, to, morning today. Uh, but we're getting a little bit uh, more clarity in that regard. We're seeing a complex of storms here developing across eastern South Dakota, moving into southern Minnesota. Separate area of storms there across southeast South Dakota into northeast Nebraska, moving toward the Sioux City area. Apologize for the road noise in the background you hear uh, in this video. I'm actually coming to you from Sioux City this morning, which is where we stayed overnight. Uh, going to be heading north a little bit uh, later to intercept some storms with our Tour 7 group here uh, in just a bit. Um, so this is our current radar picture. A couple of complexes of storms here moving off to the east. Not quite as widespread as a lot of the models had. A lot of the models had a big old MCS kind of moving through uh, eastern South Dakota, southern Minnesota, northern Iowa through the morning. That has not seemed to come to fruition at this point. It's just after 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time up here in the northern plains. And we're just seeing these kind of a weakish sort of clusters here in these areas. Nothing really organ super organized. Uh, these storms may pose a, a low end large hail threat going through the morning. Marginally severe hail going to be the main threat with these storms, but not a, not expected to be a robust severe threat uh, going through the next several hours. Behind that, going into the afternoon and early evening is where we're going, going to see the main threat uh, for severe weather develop. But because we haven't had as widespread convection this morning as expected, we may be able to see a little bit more robust severe threat develop, especially across areas of central Minnesota, which were kind of in question 
uh, last night. Uh, the main severe risk you see up in here are enhanced risk. Pretty clear at this point, just some showers with some uh, ample clearing moving in from the east. We take a look at our visible satellite imagery, and you can see exactly that why that's the case there. Uh, pretty clear skies moving in from the east here behind these clusters of storms and to the north of these, this uh, cluster of storms there in southern Minnesota. So plenty of clearing coming in. Shouldn't be too much of an issue as far as this morning convection goes uh, in terms of sort of ruining the, the uh, setup and the environment for severe storms later on. So for folks that live in these areas, obviously not a great sign and that the severe weather potential may be a little bit higher than what was previously anticipated. A little more confidence in the forecast uh, today with the clear skies kind of moving in behind these uh, morning storms. So this is gonna be our upper air map. This is at 500 millibars here on the SBC Mesoanalysis page. Not a whole lot going on across the U.S. right now. Mostly zonal flow here across the northern half of the U.S. A little bit of a weak trough here extending down into the Gulf of Mexico. Cut off low here down off the Baja California coast. And mostly just west to east or zonal flow across the northern half of the U.S. A couple little short waves though moving through the flow here across the northern plains. One here in southern Canada. And this one back in here across northern Montana into kind of southwest Canada. This is going to be our main player for our severe weather threat today. You can see an enhanced little jet streak there associated with this short wave across Montana into North Dakota. A little bit of enhanced flow there. That is going to continue to move off to the east slowly today and provide the forcing we need for severe storms later on. And because it's going to be a fairly subtle wave, not one of these uh, you know deep digging troughs we often see during the springtime, just a very subtle wave, low amplitude feature with mostly just zonal uh, westerly flow aloft uh, moving into the region, we're going to see a little bit less forcing, at least initially, for, uh, and we're going to see a, a good chance for discrete supercells to develop in this environment. Uh, so the 500 millibar pattern, this kind of pattern always raises my eyebrows as far as a discrete supercell threat because of the overall lack of really strong forcing for ascent. Uh, and more westerly flow, usually oriented more orthogonal or perpendicular to any initiating boundaries. So there we have it at 500 millibars. Let's go down to the surface. Um, not much going on at the surface except this kind of cold front. Uh, surface low located well up here into Canada. Maybe a surface low, weak surface low center there in eastern North Dakota. But mostly just a cold frontal boundary uh, draped down here into Colorado, Nebraska, up into the D Dakotas. That will continue to move off to the east slowly today. And that will provide our surface, surface mechanism, surface forcing mechanism for severe storms in the environment going into the afternoon hours. It's going to be a fairly weak cold front. We don't have a very strong temperature gradient across it. So it's not going to be one of these really strong surging cold fronts. Uh, that you'll often see uh, this time of year. It's going to be just a slow moving cold front, uh, really acting as kind of a dry line feature. Dry line's go the true dry line is going to be down here to the south. Uh, we'll show you some model data here in a second to show you where that's going to exactly be. But our true dry line is going to be down here to the south, moving off to the east a little bit uh, with time today. And uh, any, any outflow for morning convection also will have to be watched if these uh, storms put out any outflow. Uh, we'll have to see how that uh, reacts going into the afternoon hours. But overall, just this weak cold front, dry line draped down to the south, our main boundaries for storm, uh, helping storm initiation down there uh, at the surface. 850 millibars, we have a little bit of a low-level jet plume associated with this cyclone across Canada. 40 to 45 knots here at, of low-level flow down all the way into the Oklahoma Panhandle, northeastward into parts of Kansas, Nebraska, up into Minnesota. Uh, we have that low-level jet in place. Probably going to stick around a little bit. Uh, we don't see some, I would not expect significant uh, movement uh, away from this region uh, regarding this cyclone. So we're probably going to see some low-level jet plume remain, but it probably will weaken throughout the day a little bit, uh, weakening low-level shear. But uh, just we will have enough low-level shear to support a tornado threat, especially areas to the north, closer to this cyclone, where the low-level jet may be a little bit more persistent going into the afternoon up there in northern Minnesota to northwest Wisconsin. Uh, down at the surface, let's take a look at some raw surface data here. So this is our Des Moines sector. Uh, so you can see where our moisture is located. Just broad, a broad brush of 60s dew points up here into the South Dakota area, North the Dakotas down in Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa. Up in our region of interest today, we still only see a 50s dew points, very widespread 50s dew points across much of Minnesota. Taking a quick look at our northern sector here, our Duluth sector, you can see uh, we do have some splotchy 60s dew points up here in northern Minnesota, but overall the moisture at this point is a little bit on the meager side. But given that we'll have southerly to south-southwesterly flow across the region today, as that, that cold front moves off to the east, we will have the opportunity for a little bit higher moisture to make its way into the region. 
uh, and you, as you can see here, our 60s dew points hanging out here across Kansas, Nebraska, those will be able to be pulled northward into this region for to help out with the severe threat today. Now, some of the models are showing uh, us getting up into the 70s dew points. I, obviously, we know this time of year that corn is growing pretty uh, significantly across this region, uh, Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, uh, lots of those the healthy corn fields out there, leading to a little bit of evapotranspiration. And that's what we're really going to need in order to get much higher moisture into these regions. I don't really see a, a, a chance for really widespread uh, 60, upper 60s to 70s dew points to make their way into this region. And we'll see some model data in a second that tries to get the, the 70s dew points up into the region. And I just don't really see that happening, especially with this morning convection. This morning convection is going to at least uh, temporarily stunt the northward advance of more robust moisture. Again, that, this convection is moving out pretty quickly. So not going to be too much of an issue, but at least for the time being, not going to really allow robust uh, moisture convection northward into northeast Minnesota. That should commence a little bit later once these storms kind of dissipate and allow those that higher moisture to make its way northeastward. But uh, so I do have a little bit of skepticism as far as really robust moisture making its way off to the north. The SPC in their outlook this morning did mention possible upgrade in the tornado probabilities later on if we, they saw a little bit better moisture moving into this region. And I, and I just don't see that right now, given that we have just low 60s dew points in a widespread area out here to the southwest. Again, evapotranspiration may help a little bit, may get those dew points up just a couple of degrees. But overall, I don't think it's going to be that much of a compensating factor, given that we're going to have pretty clear skies in this region and temperatures soaring into the 90s most likely. So you're going to see low 90s over you know, we'll say 91, 92 degrees over your uh, surface dew points. Again, a little bit skeptical about how high they're going to get. So dew points, you know, in the mid to upper 60s at best, 92 over 65, 92 over 67. That's a pretty high temperature dew point spread. So I think the tornado threat is going to be a little bit on the, a uh, little bit on the questionable side, um, especially going into the afternoon hours. Once we get we get into early evening, as temperatures start to cool just a tad, uh, then we may see the. Uh, those those spreads come down and the tornado threat pick up going into the early evening hours, especially up here uh, in the northeast Minnesota, northwest Wisconsin corridor. So just, that's just one of my concerns this morning about the overall uh, moisture profile, especially the low level moisture profile. Let's take a look at a sounding here. The SBC site was down, but uh, a lot of folks were posting the 12Z Aberdeen, South Dakota sounding from this morning. Pretty impressive sounding uh, this morning, as you see here. This was the uh, radio sound that was released at Aberdeen, South Dakota uh, this morning at 12Z, 7 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Uh, thermo thermodynamically, pretty impressive here. Very steep lapse rates aloft, likely an elevated mix layer here taking shape above about 900 millibars or so. Very steep lapse rates aloft. That is going to keep uh, convective development, at least behind the morning round, uh, at bay until probably later in the afternoon. Again, not a ton of forcing with this setup, but we will have enough with this incoming shortwave trough, a little bit of stronger uh, flow aloft helping to erode some of that inhibition going into the afternoon, cool those mid-levels to help us get storm initiation along the uh, aforementioned boundaries uh, by about mid to late afternoon today. Very steep lapse rates loft, all, also going to lead to pretty impressive instability leading uh, going into the afternoon hours for a very robust uh, supercell development uh, with a large hail threat, at least initially. Uh, low level shear, you can see very strong at this point. Our hodographs, very favorable for all modes of severe weather. Again, that low level jet cranking this morning across this region, 40 to 45 knots or so uh, there across eastern South Dakota into Minnesota. So large looped low level hodographs this morning. Again, that is going to uh, be tempered a little bit going into the afternoon as the low level jet decreases through the day but we still should maintain some semblance of uh, decent low-level shear to support a tornado threat with supercells, uh, especially those that can become a little bit lower-based uh, if a little bit higher moisture makes its way into the region. You see at Aberdeen this morning, fairly shallow moisture plume here, 65 over 58 at the surface. Again, this is a little bit north of the best moisture, but again, out to the west, a little bit more meager moisture with dew points in the low to at mid-60s at best uh, for areas where that moisture is expected to come from. So all in all, a pretty good looking sounding for all hazards supercells later on today. Again, given that subtle forcing for ascent and this kind of a profile, supercells are likely uh, if this persists going into the afternoon uh, with all hazards on the table, especially if better moisture can get into the region, that tornado threat will increase uh, as well. Here is some model data from this morning. 12Z NAM coming in hot off the press. 
and this is how the 500 millibar pattern has been modeled. Fairly good initialization here with that little shortwave across southeast Canada and our main shortwave here across the northern, the northwest into the northern plains, uh, northwest U.S. into the northern plains. A little bit of a, a subtle shortwave within that flow associated with that stronger jet streak. That is expected to move off to the east slowly today and start overspreading the region. You see that stronger flow making its way across the region. Not a ton of defluence aloft. Here we go up to 250 millibars. Not a ton. This is not your uh, a pattern where you, you would, at first glance, really immediately immediately see widespread severe weather. Not a ton of defluence, not a very strong, deep digging, high amplitude trough. But these jet, this is a pretty classic pattern this time of year. And we do see enough defluence, perhaps, to support uh, that rising motion across this region. You see uh, winds out of the northwest across eastern South Dakota into Iowa. Much more westerly flow here across Minnesota. So very subtle but definitely uh, defluence that is in place across this region to support uh, at least subtle rising motion and subtle forcing for ascent across this region ahead of this jet streak. So enough forcing to support severe storms today. That's, that short wave will continue off to this, the east-southeast as we go into the overnight hours tomorrow, uh, tonight into tomorrow, uh, and that will support uh, the severe threat tomorrow. We'll get into tomorrow's threat in just a second. Down at the surface, Let's see how that surface uh, pattern progresses. You can uh, see a uh, very uh, weak cold front here draped down into the central high plains from our surface low up in Canada. Moves off to the east ever so slowly going into the day today. By 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time today, we'll zoom in here to our northern plains sector. You can see where that cold front is. A little bit difficult to ascertain. Again, it's a fairly weak front, so not one of these fronts where we have a strong temperature gradient across it. Temperatures in the 80s and 90s on both sides of the front. So that will allow for um, a, um, it's more a slower moving front uh, that is not as likely to just you know blow up convection all along it. Very weak uh, boundary here. Not a very strong wind shift across this boundary. You can see winds out of the west, northwest to the west of the boundary. Uh, very veered low level flow. That is a another thing that may keep the tornado threat at bay. A little bit more veered low level flow. Winds at the surface out of the southwest, even west southwest here across this region. Interestingly, a little bit more backed flow across um, northern Iowa. So if any storms can get into northern Iowa, that could be a favorite area for a little bit higher tornado threat up in there. Uh, but areas to the north, very veered low-level flow, and that may keep the tornado threat at bay just a little bit. Uh, but let's see here. Uh, let's see our moisture making its way into the region, and this is what, this, this is what I was talking about here. So I'm going to zoom into our central plain sector. So you can see this morning how we've initialized the dew points. Splotchy 60s dew points, low 60s dew points across southern South Dakota, Nebraska, down into the central and southern plains. So at this point, you know, if you were to see this and you're, you're expecting your, your low-level winds to be out of the south-southwest. So this is going to be our moisture source region here, this area of low 60s dew points at best. And so I, I do question the how we're going to get really uh, much stronger moisture into the region. It's going to have to rely pretty strongly on evapotranspiration. You can see here as we go into the afternoon, we start to see a drastic increase in the moisture here. So let me zoom into our, uh, our floater sector here. You can see that batch of 70s dew points here across kind of the central Minnesota corridor. I do question whether that's going to be the case. I just don't see evapotranspiration really overcoming um, effects, the effects of the initially fairly meager low-level moisture, as well as vertical mixing. Vertical mixing will have to be taken into, into account today, as we have some fairly dry air aloft in this sounding, uh, some drier air aloft here with that warm nose. Uh, given that we have fairly clear skies, very clear skies moving in from the west, vertical mixing may be an issue today, today and that may uh, bring dew points down just a little bit uh, going into the afternoon. So I do have some suspicions of whether of how accurate this is going to be. This is at 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time today. Corridor of 70s dew points there from uh, northeast South Dakota into that central Minnesota and northwest Wisconsin corridor. I just am a little skeptical uh, at how uh, likely this is going to be. You can see here at 7 p.m., excuse me, 7 p.m. going into 10 p.m., those 70s dew points kind of stick around here on the NAM. As we know, the NAM has a little bit of a bias as far as under mixing, uh, so we'll have to keep that in mind. Let's take a look at some other models here. The wrap is very similar, uh, so I would suspect that the wrap is kind of on board with, with what the NAM is showing, fairly uh, under mixed environment 
You know, you, we do see some splotchy 70s dew points taking shape here, and that will have to be due to evapotranspiration and getting those dew points up a little bit. So this can make its way up. You see here, though, they do not really make their way up into northeast Minnesota, northwest Wisconsin. Your, your main uh, strongest, highest dew points are still down here in central to southern Minnesota, down into the kind of Dakotas, Iowa border region there. So we'll have to keep that in mind. This is what the wrap is showing. This is the NAM. Uh, you can see there are more splotchy dew points up in here across northeast Minnesota. So uh, that is an interesting development here with our model data this morning. Um, and again, I, I'm a little skeptical how high those dew points will get. Perhaps if we do get evapotranspiration to offset the effects of vertical mixing, those dew points may hang around in the mid to upper 60s at best. 70s dew points, I just, I'm a little skeptical. We're going to see 70s dew points today across this region. So again, those temperatures getting up into the 90s. We know the NAM is a little bit cool here with temperatures, uh, but going toward the late afternoon. Upper 80s, you can add a few degrees to that. Temperatures getting closer to the low 90s. So again, low 90s, 92. At best, I think we get maybe 67, 68 dew points. Still pretty high temperature dew point spreads and should keep the tornado threat at bay. So looking at the data here this morning, I'm a little bit more skeptical of the overall tornado risk uh, going into the at least the afternoon hours today. As those temperatures come down towards sunset, we may see a little bit higher tornado risk develop. Um, but again, those low level uh, veered winds may also keep the tornado threat at bay. Let's take a couple soundings here, or let's take a first look at the low-level jet, uh, how it's going to respond uh, today. So I'll zoom back out. So we start the day today, that plume of low-level jet extending down into the southern high plains. Slowly moves off to the east today, and we'll, we'll maintain some of that plume going into the afternoon. This is at 4, now 7 p.m. Plume of low-level jet here relegated off to the east just a little bit, so kind of the, southern, the northern Wisconsin, southern Minnesota. Uh, Iowa corridor there. Areas off to the east, not quite in that low-level jet plume, uh, but areas off to the west a little bit uh, will be have that stronger low-level flow to support a tornado risk if that moisture can become uh, a little bit better. And you can see that low-level shear might be on the weaker side. Just looking at this map, we saw those surface winds more out of the south-southwest, so not a ton of low-level turning of the winds with height. So that makes me think also the tornado threat may be a little bit on the lower side given somewhat limited low-level shear, low-level uh, low level turning going to be on the weaker side across these areas. So let's take some soundings here from across the region. I'll zoom back out here. Let's go to 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Let's take a sounding here, kind of the uh, western Minnesota, northeast South Dakota corridor, and then one up here across northeast Minnesota, just west of the Duluth area. So you can see what we're talking about here. Those low-level winds are very much veered, very limited low-level flow as far as intensity goes. 89 over 70, that's, again, assuming we can get dew points up that high, and I, I think that's going to be our surface temperatures here. 89, those are going to be a little bit higher. Moisture going to be a little bit lower, so those temperature dew point spreads pretty high. But not overall a hodograph that is going to favor tornadic activity. Very straight hodographs here, not any curvature really at all in the low levels of the hodograph. So this would favor more of a large hail and damaging wind risk for any supercells that can fire back out to the west. Off to the north, again, you can see very limited low level shear here. This is again at 4 p.m. We'll take a look further on in a second. 83 over 66 up here. Uh, so six, dew points definitely lower up here as are surface temperatures as progged by the NAM. And again, this is up here, kind of uh, north central Minnesota, or northeast Minnesota, excuse me, just west of the Duluth area. So just for giggles here, let's take a look at the uh, forecast high temperature for Duluth, Minnesota today. And we'll see what the NWS is predicting. So 80 degree high temperature. So temperatures may be a little bit cooler up there. And therefore, the temperature dew point spreads may be a little bit lower up there, uh, increasing the tornado threat with any more organized supercells in this region of northern and northeast Minnesota. Um, but the low-level shear, again, is on the weaker side. A little bit of curvature here in the low levels of the hodograph. Uh, we, and we may have enough to support at least a low-end threat for a tornado or two, given a robust instability in excess of 3,000 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape. But... Still, I think it's going to be a little bit on the lower side, but wouldn't be surprised to see a few tornado warnings up there in northern to northeast Minnesota, far northwest Wisconsin. Robust instability certainly will favor a large hail threat as well, especially if this weaker low-level shear is able to verify. Very large hail, definitely a possibility up there with supercells today, as is some damaging wind threat. Let's go on to zero Z here. A little bit better moisture starting to creep up to the north. Uh, again, on the NAM, I'm a little bit skeptical if that's going to take place, but let's go ahead and see here how things are going to shake out as far as what the NAM is predicting. 
So this is going to be that northeast Minnesota corridor. And here we go, a little bit of a ramp up in the low level shear here by 7 p.m. Very strong instability, 4,400 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape with some curvature there now in the low levels of the hodograph. Nice curvature there in the low levels there. Um, and strengthening of the winds, in ex uh, leading to SRH, effective storm relative felicity, in excess of 250 meters squared per second squared. So this would certainly favor that tornado threat, and that is why the SPC is kind of on the fence as far as increasing the tornado risk, because this is a, certainly a profile that would favor more of a robust tornado risk uh, if this could take place. Uh, but again, that's going to all rely on backed, how backed the low-level flow can get on this particular, uh, in this particular location. That low-level flow very much backed out of the south-southwest, almost due southerly winds there. Um, so if that is able to take place, uh, then the tornado threat would be able to, to materialize um, across this region. Uh, farther back to the southwest, again, very limited low-level shear uh, with strong instability, so mostly a large hail and damaging wind risk uh, with storms out here um, in uh, the kind of western to central Minnesota corridor and areas southward. So eventually, storms will kind of congeal into a line going into the evening hours to, uh, tonight into tomorrow. Let's take a look at some convection-allowing model data. This is the 12Z HRRR run coming in hot off the press as well. So has a pretty good handle on the morning activity, not super widespread. That moves off to the east pretty quickly going into the afternoon hours today. And then behind it, you see robust supercell development here uh, just to the east of the cold front ahead of that shortwave uh, across northern, uh, north central Minnesota. Um, and uh, so those are going to have the greatest threat for that all hazards risk. We see a few storms down to the southwest as well towards central Minnesota again weaker low-level shear in this area, perhaps a little bit higher temperature dew point spread is going to lead to mostly just a large hail and wind risk with the st any storms uh, with far southwestern extent. But these storms up here across the northeast Minnesota corridor would have that uh, better tornado risk associated with them, as well as that large hail and damaging wind risk. Then things kind of uh, peter out as we go into the overnight hours tonight and move into tomorrow. Let's take a look at the WERF ARW model. So this is just another model we like to use. Uh, you can see kind of a pretty quick transition to a line up here. Not sure that how real, realistic that's going to be. This model actually has the strongest storms at the tail end of this line across central to south central Minnesota, southwest Minnesota. So an interesting solution there. Let's look at the NSSL WERF model real quick. So here's the NSSL WERF, just another model we like to use. And this is a little bit more robust supercell development up here across the northern Minnesota corridor uh, with kind of more of a, a clustered linear mode down to the south. Uh, so these certainly would have that greater all hazards threat, more of a discrete supercell mode up there in that northern Minnesota, even far back into northeast North Dakota uh, and southern Ontario uh, corridor there. So, that, so the model's still a little bit all over the place this morning, but I think meteorologically speaking, we can expect uh, at least scattered supercell development by about mid to late afternoon uh, with the greatest uh, parameter space up here across the northern to northeast Minnesota corridor uh, going into the early evening hours, uh, fostering that all hazards risk. So that is going to do it for today's risk. Let's briefly talk about tomorrow. Don't want to go too deep into tomorrow. We're going to have to uh, figure out how today goes before we can get into tomorrow a little bit deeper. But we back it out here to start starting this evening. That shortwave trough at 500 millibars moves off to the east very nicely. Uh, we start to see this cutoff low make its way inland across the southwest. That could be a player going into the next several days here, going toward the, toward the latter portion of the week. This moves off to the northeast and could provide some support for severe weather across uh, for that Friday time frame into the weekend across these central plains. Get in, we'll get into that in just a second. But tomorrow, that shortwave moves off to the east across the northern plains. Uh, and we're going to see uh, that uh, forcing still remain on the fairly subtle side, mostly going to have to rely on that cold front. That cold front will begin sagging to the south across this region uh, slowly. Still, again, not going to be one of those super uh, uh, really strongly fast moving cold fronts with that strong temperature gradient across it, but it will be moving a little bit, and that will be our main initiate initiation mechanism uh, for severe storms tomorrow. So we'll go down to the surface and kind of show you how that's going to progress. So we'll look at our uh, central plain sector here. So you can see where that frontal zone is uh, This uh, going into the overnight hours tonight. Frontal zone kind of draped right in there. Very weak frontal zone, not a strong wind shift across it. Going, We go off into tomorrow, and you'll see, you can see that, that uh, wind shift kind of tighten up a little bit. So you can see northerly winds across Nebraska and Iowa, southwesterly winds to the south of it. Uh, so your cold front going to be draped kind of right in here 
across this region, uh, and this will allow, be our initiation initiating mechanism, uh, initiation mechanism in tomorrow's setup. Very hot temperatures to the south of this frontal zone, um, and so. Um, that could lead to more high-based storms down to the south. You can see, given on the moisture plot here, that that front is going to continue to sag southward with time. So it, given that we have our flow that is kind of parallel to this front with a southward moving front, storms may tend to cross the front tomorrow uh, fairly quickly, uh, leading to more of a um, uh, sort of a large hail uh, risk as the storms cross the front. Uh, we do have perhaps a little bit more of a northwesterly component, so storms may have a tent, more storms may try to anchor to that frontal boundary uh, and stay to the south of it, but it, that front is going to be sagging south with time. Fairly slow moving, so perhaps not a very quick transition to storms north of the front, uh, more elevated storms north of the front, uh, but that, storm, that cold front will continue to sag southward with time uh, going into the afternoon hours tomorrow. So let's take a few soundings here from across the front up into um, the uh, Northern Plains region, or the uh, uh, Midwest region here, 4 p.m. tomorrow, Northern Illinois, down to the south across Southern Iowa, and then one back across kind of Northeast Kansas. So all in all, uh, decent looking profile for some robust severe storms tomorrow, strong instability in excess uh, nearly 4,000 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape there in Northern Illinois. Not much low level shear to speak of at all, very veered low level flow, uh, so mostly a large hail and damaging wind risk there. Back to the southwest, not much to speak of as well, some curvature there in the low levels of the hodograph. Uh, but not really all that much in the really lowest kilometer or two. So again, tomorrow going to be mostly a large hail and damaging wind risk. This is your profile in, in Kansas. Very strong instability across that front, across and along into the south of that front for a very robust uh, setup tomorrow. We can look ahead a little bit at our, uh, let's take a look at our central plain sector uh, and look at our 12Z HER for tomorrow if it's out far enough. So we see here going into tomorrow uh, that we have storms kind of blow up along that front, quickly becoming uh, fairly messy into a more linearly organized complex. Uh, temperature dew point spread is probably going to be pretty high across this region, so mostly a large hail and damaging wind risk as this kind of complex develops along the southward sagging cold front tomorrow. Uh, pretty good depiction, I think, uh, from the HER here of what we might see uh, with tomorrow's setup. Then we go into Friday. Friday is starting to look pretty interesting. I'll, I'll zoom back out here, go to our 500 millibar map. So this is starting tomorrow evening, a zero Z Friday, so 7 p.m. Thursday, which is tomorrow. So we go into Friday, you see that shortwave trough moves into the uh, kind of the central high plains from the desert southwest, kind of uh, loses some steam there. You see we go back, starts off as a pretty robust open wave, uh, closed low, uh, excuse me, across the uh, California coast, moves inland and kind of loses its uh, ferocity, if you will, there, kind of just opens up into a weak open wave underneath this ridge, uh, within this ridge that it has developed across the southern half of the U.S., but we do see a little bit of flow here impinging across the Colorado, Nebraska, northern Kansas corridor with perhaps a few ripples in the uh, flow here. This is a classic uh, kind of late spring, early summer setup across these regions, and these can provide some pretty impressive uh, setups, at least from, from a storm chasing perspective, uh, and, it, and some all hazard threat as well. Uh, this is what we saw a lot last year. Uh, if you recall, the June-July period last year was extremely active up here in the northern to central plains, uh, especially across the Wyoming, Nebraska, Colorado corridor there. Uh, almost daily uh, severe threats across that region, and that this was the pattern. Very limited, uh, not really these strong troughs coming in, but just these little short waves embedded in, in slightly uh, enhanced flow embedded within the overall mostly zonal flow, helping to kick off those events, and that's exactly what we have here. Going down to the surface, we see we have a little bit of surface flow development here going into Friday uh, across the Wyoming corridor there. So that is going to help back surface winds, unlike the next couple of days when surface winds should remain fairly veered out of the southwest across our Midwest corridor. We're going to have fairly backed low-level flow here across Nebraska, Colorado, uh, and that should help uh, usher the low-level moisture into this region uh, after the uh, weak cold frontal passage uh, going into tomorrow. So we look down at the moisture here and we can see how that is going to progress. So that cold front, that slowly sagging, southward sagging front continues going into the day tomorrow. Then as that surface load develops here across eastern Wyoming, we'll start to see those winds back and strengthen out of the southeast and start pulling the this higher moisture, these blue and purple colors here, the, these mid to upper 60s dew points, up into this Nebraska, Kansas, northeast Colorado corridor. You see that happens fairly quickly going into the afternoon on Friday. 
and very robust moisture making its way into Nebraska, northeast Colorado, northwest uh, and west Kansas for our setup on Friday. So this is looking pretty good. Little short wave, subtle, subtly enhanced flow aloft with pretty robust moisture for this area. Again, in the higher terrain regions, we don't need as much moisture as we do out here in the lower plains. Uh, so because we have uh, this kind of robust moisture, lows, even low 60s dew points up here act like mid to upper 60s dew points across the lower terrain. So this is pretty... Uh, high moisture for this area of the country and with a uh, subtle flow aloft this should be a per this is starting to look like a pretty a nice setup especially from a chasing perspective across nebraska northeast colorado northwest kansas so let's take a couple soundings here we'll take one from southwest nebraska here maybe one up in northeast colorado uh, and then one down into northwest kansas um, so here you and here you go this is a classic classic sounding uh, for this area for a uh, robust all hazards th severe threat instability in excess of 2300 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape a little bit high base storms again temperatures are probably going to be a little bit higher than this but again 64 dew point in this part of the country is pretty robust as far as moisture goes uh, and can help compensate for that uh, as well as that higher terrain uh, hodographs looking pretty good low level flow nicely backed low level flow lots of curvature in the low levels of the hodograph uh, perhaps leading to that all hazards threat there perhaps some structure with these storms as well uh, could be pretty impressive up there in Colorado a little bit of convective, convective contamination so we'll we'll uh, disregard that for now up into Kansas not a ton of a mid and upper level flow you can see there about 10 knots at 500 millibars uh, so for, forcing certainly going to be on the subtle side but ample instability uh, strong shear in the lowest couple of kilometers of the atmosphere uh, going to help with that all hazards threat uh, with some initial supercells probably congealing into more of a line uh, as we go forward uh, if the nam nest is all the way out we can maybe see out here uh, into uh, the kind of uh, friday time frame as far as what uh, the initial convection allowing models are showing so you see here that mcs uh, along the, the southward sagging front goes into the evening and overnight hours on friday and then we see uh, development going into the uh, northern plains or the central plains here on uh, Friday afternoon. Not pretty uh, unimpressive uh, here, and this is not all that surprising. Just wanted to take a quick look. As we, as we know, cams this far out, not all that reliable. Uh, but just wanted to take a quick look uh, and see if it had anything. But we'll uh, withhold judgment until we get some more model data in uh, for the Friday setup. But just from a meteorological perspective, it is looking pretty good, especially from a chasing perspective, for a potentially all-hazards threat, especially across Nebraska, northeast Colorado, northwest Kansas, uh, as that flow backs and that uh, moisture makes its way into the region ahead of that little short wave aloft. So that is the next few days for you. Again, the SPC now has a day six risk out uh, for us across the Northern Plains once again. Uh, so just a quick look here. We'll take a look at the uh, GFS ensembles really quick. Um, don't want to go too deep into this uh, upcoming setup at this point as we will have uh, certainly the models changing pretty significantly uh, over the next several days uh, approaching as the setup approaches. But just want to give you a, a quick look at why the SPC is, is highlighted a risk area for day six. Again, day six uh, is going to be this area, Eastern Dakotas into Minnesota for that Monday timeframe, June 17th. So 500 millibar GFS, this is the GFS ensemble, mean 500 millibar uh, pattern here. Uh, if it ever loads here, so here you go. So this is going into the Monday time frame, uh, and you can see nice uh, westerly flow aloft, some short waves embedded it within this flow, no doubt. Uh, some stronger flow aloft there across the northern plains uh, with likely some moisture uh, remaining across this area of the northern and uh, high plains into the midwest uh, going into the uh, early week tomorrow uh, and that should foster that severe threat there uh, mid to upper 60s dew points making their way into the eastern dakotas minnesota uh, down into iowa so we'll have to watch that corridor uh, for the monday time frame and again we'll, we might have we'll probably have severe thunderstorm chances daily uh, as we go into the uh, next several days, even in the, into the weekend, past that day three time frame, uh, leading up to the day six time frame. But uh, for now, uh, not we can't speak too much on that threats. The, the, those threats, we're going to have to see how the the daily severe threat uh, kind of works out over the next several days uh, to see how the weekend is going to go. But I'm sure we'll have a severe threat somewhere going into Saturday and Sunday, and then things pick back up for Monday. So that's going to do it for this video. Once again, an active stretch of severe weather, kind of shifting off to the north a little bit, central to northern plains into the Midwest and Great Lakes. Here's our risk area for today, enhanced risk across north, northeast Minnesota into northwest uh, Wisconsin. Large, slight risk surrounding that. 
all hazards on the table for today. Again, the tornado threat is a little bit conditional, depending if we can get actually better moisture up into this region. If we can, that tornado threat is going to be a little bit higher, uh, perhaps than anticipated with a discrete supercell mode that is favored. Uh, but that tornado threat is certainly there. Uh, back to the southwest, very limited low-level shear and higher temperature dew point spreads should limit the overall threat for the southern half of Minnesota into the eastern South Dakota, northern Iowa corridor. Large hail going to be a significant risk today as well with that discrete supercell mode favored. Uh, very robust instability and steep lapse rates aloft with that uh, strong deep layer shear for supercells. Will favor large to very large hail in any supercells that develop here across this corridor. And some damaging winds favored there along that uh, corridor surrounding the, the Duluth area of northeast Minnesota. Then tomorrow the front sags southward a little bit. Likely more of a convective complex uh, that develops along the frontal zone here. Low end tornado risk, but mostly a damaging wind and some hill risk in the initial portion of the convective life cycle before uh, we uh, morph into more of an MCS along the southward sagging front. And then Friday, looking pretty good across the central plains, spe specifically northeast Colorado, Nebraska, northern Kansas, for that all hazards severe threat that may develop there. Uh, meteorologically speaking, looks pretty good, but we're going to have to wait and see how things play out uh, going into the tomorrow uh, to see how uh, Friday may unfold. And then our day six risk once again uh, for that Monday time frame, probably going to have day four and five uh, risks at some point here, but that day six risk is outlined for Monday, June 17th, eastern Dakotas into uh, Minnesota for a severe threat there. We'll have more on this uh, day six threat uh, as we get some more information come in the next uh, few days. So an active stretch of severe weather on tap for the northern part of the U.S. Uh, and that is uh, certainly uh, what we often see this time of year uh, after a very active central and southern plains to midwest season. Uh, we're shifting that threat north into the northern plains, midwest and Great Lakes regions uh, for the foreseeable future. So with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.